In this series of videos, we're going to talk about fragments. This video is essentially a table of contents that's going to overview what we're going to talk about when we talk about fragments. First, why? Uh, fragments were introduced in Android 3.0 uh, to support larger tablet resolution because our traditional view of an Android device is a phone. Uh, but then we get to tablets, Google TV, uh, even the watch, things like that, and we see a need to support more than a 400 by 800 resolution. Now, a fragment is kind of like a, a, a user interface part that's managed by an activity. So we traditionally have thought of activities and layouts is the things that make the Android screens that we view. Uh, fragments are another component of that, or fragment, to say it another way, fragments are a refactoring of that. Uh, we are disconnecting the concept that a layout has to be tied directly to an activity. Instead, we can tie layouts to fragments and then tie fragments to activities. So it adds another layer here. Uh, the, the benefit is we can decide to use different fragments based on the layout, uh, sorry, based on the resolution of the device. So we can say a phone will display fragments on individual screens where a tablet might combine two fragments in one. Uh, we can also reuse the fragments across different activities if we need to. So if there's a component that we find we're using a lot, maybe some kind of navigation or search, that's something that we can reuse across different activities. Um, it has its own life cycle, but is also tied to the activities life cycle in some ways. So, let's take a look. This might be a little bit tricky to show on the emulator, and as a matter of fact, uh, I know I'm going to have a couple breakpoints I'm going to hit, so I will probably pause this a couple times. But here is one app on a phone emulator, and notice that we have a list of items here. I'm going to click on item 1. It's going to jump me over to my debugger, so let me fast forward through that. And what we're going to see is that we clicked on basically a, a, a summary list, and then it comes to this page which is a detail page. Now there's not much detail on this, but not to worry about that. Uh, in the example we're going to do, we are going to have uh, plant details. So we'll have plants and plant details. Now. Let's take a look at that same app, but this time on a tablet emulator. So this doesn't fit, this emulator doesn't fit entirely within my screen capture here, uh, but enough of it fits that you can see it. So this is the same app in a tablet emulator. And now to make this a little bit easier to see, I've turned off the breakpoints that I had before. But notice we have a list on the left, and we have on the right the detail. So if I click on item one, well, looks like I missed one of my breakpoints. Let me go ahead and disable that breakpoint. And there we go. So if we click item one, we see item one details over here. If we click item two, we see item two details. If we click item three, we see item three details. So you see this presents everything on one consolidated view. We have the list fragment and we have the detail, where in the phone, uh, they were on two different views, two different activities essentially, two different screens. So fragments give us the ability to make a layout that looks good on whatever resolution the user is using. This example is a demo uh, that's provided with Android. What I'm going to do is recreate this essentially uh, specifically for plants. So back to the presentation, just a screen capture of what we were looking at. Uh, a little about, about the life cycle of activities uh, in fragments. Fragments have to live in activities. Fragments are affected by the host activity for certain events like getting paused when we leave the page or maybe when the page becomes uh, uh, partially visible or obstructed. And also when the host activity is destroyed. Uh, but while the activity is running, fragments can have their own separate life cycle because, as I said earlier, a fragment kind of is between an activity and a layout, where previously we considered those two one and the same. Now, one trick is that we have to be careful uh, with this thing called the back stack. When we hit the back button on the uh, Android device, this button right here, where does it go? Does it take us to the previous activity, or does it simply take us uh, to the previous selection that we made on this uh, on this fragment. 
So uh, fragments can be added to the back stack so that we stay within the activity when we hit back. Uh, and we just iterate over our fragments, our, our fragment history, essentially. Okay, so fragments are in a view group of the owning activity. We use a fragment element in the layout to say where the fragments should live. And fragments, by the way, um, you need fragments if you're using the new Google Maps, the version 2 Google Maps in your app. They work with fragments. Uh, preferences work with fragments. Several other things work with fragments. So uh, I kind of hesitated to use fragments just because it, it did feel like a little added complexity. But there are certain cases where you have to use fragments. Uh, and there's definitely a good time to use fragments if you want your app to work well on tablet and uh, phone alike. So to create a fragment, we're going to extend the class called fragment. Uh, we have callback methods on create, on start, on pause, on stop. Uh, and then on create view, that's similar to the on create method that we'll see in an activity. Uh, and so that's where we can match up our layout. Uh, just like in an activity, we'll use the um, set content view to set the layout. In a fragment, we're actually going to be inflating XML. So we'll see all that in my example that will come shortly. Uh, there are some fragment subclasses that we can use directly. Uh, the one that's probably easiest to use is preference fragment because we need to set up our preferences in an XML file and then we simply load that XML file into the fragment and we're done. If you're getting started with fragments, this might be a good one to choose. We also have a floating dialog for a dialog fragment, and then a list fragment, just like the one we saw. Whoops, looks like I closed that up. Uh, just like the one we saw on our tablet, the list with the uh, details page. That's probably one of the most functional uh, fragments that we can use. So preferences fragment, we're going to make a separate XML file under res XML, add whatever preferences we want. Uh, and then within the fragments on create view, we're simply going to say add preferences from resource, and that will draw a preferences or settings screen. Uh, we'll definitely get some use out of that. As a matter of fact, if we look at uh, the uh, tablet app, if I choose settings here, we'll see I have just a couple of check I set up as a demo, Fuji and Honeycrisp. Uh, whoops, that's how it looks in our tablet. Um, and in the, in the phone, if I choose settings, we see it will come up again, a little different layout. One really nice thing, by the way, if you take a look up here at the menu options, we have settings and plants. This is by using the uh, menu XML, and I've set each of these menu items to be uh, shown if there's room available. What you see with the tablet is there is a whole lot more room available. So that's another good reason to think about design for a tablet. You can completely eliminate having a separate menu screen uh, because you can simply put all of the menu items up on the action bar if you wish. Now one thing we want to think about with Android quality is that we typically try to reduce the number of screens that the user has to go to when possible. We don't want to complicate the user's task. Okay, I mentioned it's a little bit different uh, to inflate a fragment uh, as opposed to a traditional set content view that we'll have on an activity. For example, in our app that I'm showing you, this is uh, the detail page. And what you'll see is this is the onCreateView method, which is specific to fragments. And here's where we are telling it to inflate the fragment layout, uh, our layout fragment plant detail. If I take a look, and I realize this is a little bit off screen, uh, but I've clicked on the left on this fragment plant detail, uh, and it's going to pull up in a minute. It will pull up uh, the fragment view. So not much going on here right now. I said we'll, we'll enhance this a bit in a future le lecture. But what it's doing is it's simply taking this uh, and inflating that into the fragment in, the, in that on uh, create view method. Now to add a fragment to an activity, we simply go to that activities layout and we use a fragment element to tell it which fragment we wish to add. For example, in the two pane layout that we saw on the tablet view, uh, let's take a look at the layout that's composing that. The layout is activity plant two pane. 
And what you'll see here is that we have a fragment that is referring to the plant list fragment. And then on the right side, we have a uh, frame layout that, uh, that includes the details. But uh, that's actually to a different container, the plant detail container. Uh, but nonetheless, what we're focused on here is that plant list fragment, which is represented in the parent layout, the layout for the activity, uh, simply with the fragment tag. Now, the real question is, how did we get two pane here? How do we get two different fragments here, uh, where the phone is only showing uh, one fragment per screen, if we take a look at this? How do we do that? we have to use something, uh, we have to use a little trick. Uh, we can apply different orientations by using different folders in the uh, res directory. So you see the default place where we put a layout is usually res-layout, and that's what we have here. But we can, if we wish, uh, have a different layout for landscape mode by using a folder called res-land layout. So if I make a new folder under res, and I call it land layout, uh, and I have, I have layouts with these same names, but maybe different internals, different representations of the button internally, then as soon as I take the phone or the device and I switch it to landscape mode instead of portrait mode, it's going to use the XML files under layout land folder instead of layout. One note is that you don't get that folder by default when you create a project in Eclipse, but it's easy enough to make. You just right-click on Res, say New, and then Folder, and then Land Layout, just like so. Okay, uh, incidentally, I wanted to mention that, but that's not exactly how we're doing it in this case. In this case, we're using something else, which is a Layout alias. Uh, so, uh, Res Layout, and I'm going to look at... Uh, something called values large and take a look at this thing called refs this refs says okay if I am in a large layout then what I want to do is when an activity is asking for activity plant list layout I'm gonna make a runtime substitution and I'm going to bring activity plant to pane so you see that when we have a an, an app running with large resolution it's able to dynamically substitute the layout at runtime from activity plant list to activity to pane. Okay, so let's take a look at our uh, plant list activity and we will see that it sets the content view to activity plant list, which if we're on the phone, here's what we're going to look like activity plant list, and we have our layout down here activity plant list. And this is simply showing only one thing, and that is the plant list fragment. Now, we go back and take a look again. Let's just remember where we were. We look at the plant list activity. It's calling for this activity plant list. But now, let's pretend that we are the tablet instead of the phone. For the tablet, it's going to go to this values large. It's going to see activity plant list. And it's going to realize that we're doing a runtime substitution to tell it to look at activity plant to pane. Okay, so a different layout. So we go to activity plant to pane, and this takes us back to our friend that we saw earlier, where we have a linear layout cut into two pieces. One piece is the plant list fragment, which is the fragment just showing the list, and the other is a frame layout that's showing us. Uh, the plant detail container, which is the detail page. Okay, but what's the plant detail container? Well, as it works out, this is simply a holding place that we have. It's, it's an ID, uh, it's an identifier for an area where we are going to let the activity decide to put a fragment later. So here we're explicitly stating what the fragment is, where here we're saying, okay, I'm just going to leave a little marker here we're going to let the activity decide what to do later. And sure enough, if we go back to our friend, the plant list activity, uh, what we're going to see is that it's going to call on this plant detail container, and it's going to use something called a support fragment manager to replace that at runtime with a different fragment. 
Uh, in this case, we're, we are using code to say, okay, create my fragment, uh, set any arguments we want to set in it, and this fragment is the one showing the plain details. And then we're going to use this support fragment manager and say, hey, go out, find that unique identifier, uh, and put this fragment in that place, and then commit says, okay, uh, now you're good, now go forward. So uh, this is a, a quick overview of fragments, and it honestly is a bit confusing until you try it. So at the end of this video, I wouldn't by any stretch expect you to be an expert. Uh, I just want to give you a little overview and show you what we're going to explore in our next few videos. Now, I'm not sure how many I'm going to make, but I will make a playlist out of this so we can uh, see them all chapter by chapter. So uh, let me know what you think. I appreciate your comments as always, and we'll uh, respond to them. Uh, any questions as quickly as I can. Thank you.